respond here. But right now, time for the, the Fox, Biz Mor Fox Business Morning Squawk Box. We want to talk a lot about, about housing. I mean, certainly we have uh, the Attorney General there in Illinois that we talked about, this Angelo Mazzillo uh, case, the lawsuit that's going to be filed there. We have uh, new home sales data coming out today. And we have Charles, Charles Payne with us as always. And Doug Flynn from Flynnzito Capital Management is with us today as well. Um, before we get to housing, Charles, I'll just throw you a quick thing on the UBS. Do you think that bank eventually gets taken over? I do. And yeah. uh, I think there might be a wave of consolidation. I got to tell you, the financials looked great yesterday. Not just UBS, but Lehman and some of the other ones. Uh, you got to believe we're at a point where one of the next logical steps doesn't is, sound is, like you. Financials look great. Do you know what? I, I didn't feel that way, but I've been watching them. The way they act, the way they act on the tape, and I think the risk reward is not that bad here. If you if you're too early, you don't miss. You know, listen. If you buy City here, you might be down a couple of points. But if something happens, like for instance, a Lehman or UBS, which are the two top candidates to be acquired, you can All make right. a lot of money. All right, let's talk about housing. We have a lot on the, you know, on the docket today. We can get into Mozilla a little bit. We could talk about the housing data that's coming out today. Doug, we, yesterday we had this Case Shiller index, and a lot of people made a big deal about all the drops we saw in these cities around the country, and they were big. Sure. There's some sign, maybe you could make the case, some people were making it, that we're closer to a bottom. Do you think we're closer to a bottom now, or no? Oh, I think we're closer to the bottom, but we're not, not there yet. at the bottom. No, I think you've probably got another 10 or 15 percent in most markets. You know, it's a very regional thing, but I think in most markets you've got a way to go there. Uh, and so, you know, it gets back to if it's your primary residence you're going to have for 30 years, it's not so much of an issue. But but uh, if you're looking to move out or, or change or you had an investment property, that's where this, this is a problem for those people right. who bought at the high. Yeah, and we've seen Vegas and Miami and these markets. That wouldn't surprise you, but it's other markets now as well, Charles, that are starting to show declines that had held up. What's your take on whether or not we're close to a bottom at this point? Uh, you know, calling the bottom on this is tough, but I think to Doug's point, it's still mostly a regional thing and, and largely, I'd say a large percentage, 30%, maybe more of it. it you know, it's so funny talking about speculation in, in the crude market. It was speculation and, you know, people trying know. to flip homes. And, and, you know, you look at the list of the cities, it's, it's the same names up there. So, you know, the good news is if you lived in a town where you didn't have, you know, where you didn't have the great run ups and you're not looking at the serious significant declines, except maybe in the Rust Belt, which is hurting economically. Right. Um, yes. Yeah, so but they're not out to get those speculators, by the way. But that's <laughs> no. a whole other topic yeah. that we could get into. Uh, we had this story a few minutes ago that we were talking about this survey that's out on baby boomers. I mean, they talk about the ages of 45 to 54, and it's very interesting because they say that these folks have lost 25% of their wealth compared to the same group in 2004. I'm sure you have a lot of people coming into that group to see you talking about retirement. What do you tell them? Definitely. That's a big segment of people planning for retirement. The unfortunate part is if they plan to have real estate that big a part of their retirement. It depends. If you were counting on your home uh, that you were going to downsize, you've lost a, a good piece of that. Uh, it, what it speaks to is the fact that you can't rely on just real estate for your entire portfolio. You should have also had uh, your retirement assets, your 401k and other types of savings. But a lot of that that drop happened in that area, although it pro probably is partly due to the market going down as well. Yeah. Have you, have you, you know, personally met or talked to a lot of people that did get caught with the, relying too much on real estate? Well, I will tell you, uh, I'll give you one scenario. We had a client call us up and s the first thing out of his mouth was, uh, don't yell at me. But uh, I, know yeah. I, I know you would have told me not to do this, but uh, I got caught up and I bought a place in Florida and, uh, you know, they're upside down. So yeah. we're talking about educated people that have money that just got wrapped up into it. And now they're looking at walking away because they're so upside down, uh, they can't even rent this out. So there's a lot more pain to go on in that area, I think, before it, before it b flattens out and then starts to go back up. Tough spot, isn't it, Charles? It is, but I saw this movie before. It was in 2001, 2002, 2003. The same thing happened in the stock market. I know. You know, you had people who were going to retire at age 40. Almost everyone was going to retire between 40 and 50. Even cab drivers are trading the market between fares. And, you know, the same exact thing. Part of it is our mentality of chasing performance no matter what. When we see an asset blow up, Americans in general want to go after it yeah. so late into the game. Yep. Now, you know, it's a buy low, sell high. gets thrown out the window a lot yeah. of times. Uh, Charles already had his, his chance, to, his take on Mozilla. Sure. Well, I think he said there was a perpetually tanned comment thrown in there. <laughs> what do you make of this? I mean, is it, can we blame one guy for what, what happened here? Yeah, well, I mean, there's par par partly to blame there, sure. I mean, there are people that got, uh, that didn't know what they were purchasing, no, no doubt about it. We've all seen that no one really reads all those documents you sign in a closing. But, you know, I get back to the fact that there was a day, at least when I bought my house and most people that you had to put 20% down and you actually had to afford the darn thing. Uh, so we got so far away w from that as they tried to stretch and continue to get earnings and next thing you, you, you know they're putting no money down and, and people don't have any even the money to make the payment let alone if the rate adjusts. So you know there's 
It's partly people to blame, but it's uh, certainly people that uh, took advantage of people that didn't understand. Yeah. All right, uh, Doug and Charles, we appreciate both of your time. Thanks very much. As we move on, the world is uh, making more millionaires, even with all these things going on. But the U.S. may be soon left in the dust in that list. We're going to have which countries are making their people rich. Don't want to miss that. That and much more coming up on Fox Business Morning.